course, the, the game this week that popped on everybody's radar was BYU at Allen Fieldhouse coming back to beat KU. And what a year it's been. Uh, a really good year. Baylor got a taste of that BYU long-distance shooting just over a week or so ago. We're joined by Greg Rubel, voice of BYU Athletics with Craig and Paul David Smoke. Greg, thank you very much. Can you describe what that win, and I know they've had many others, but what did that win mean to the program in your opinion? Well, in terms of regular season wins, it, it's one of the biggest in program history, and, and there have been some big ones for BYU. Most recently, they came in Spokane against those you know first and second ranked and undefeated at home Gonzaga teams in the last decade or so. So wins it in, in Spokane were big. Gonzaga was a national name by then, and, and the Cougars actually got them three times in a row up there, which nobody was doing. So those were pretty big because Gonzaga was either a one or two team nationally and, and never lost at home. Uh, but, you know, the, the kennel's not Allen Fieldhouse. And and so to go to the, uh, you know, essentially the home of college basketball, if you will, and, and take down a top 10 team on its home floor in a place where they won 19 in a row and, and a 14-0 and this year and a 12-point lead in the second half, you know, teams generally don't win those kinds of games, and, and BYU did. And so to do it in a sold-out building with all the history and as good as KU is, and in your first year in the Big 12, trying to prove yourself for a lot of reasons, it feels like one of the biggest regular season wins BYU's ever had. Greg, as organized as student section and fan bases, you'll find almost at any sport. And so most of the time when you're in Allen Fieldhouse, you're not going to get a moment to think. But towards the end of that game, they kind of had the crowd just dumbfounded. What was that like experiencing a, a fog Allen Fieldhouse that was a little bit beside itself? Well, it was my first trip in there for a game. But I know that when the fans began streaming for the exits with under five minutes to go, that had to be a pretty rare experience in that building. And, and so a lot of those fans felt it was over. It wasn't over, but a lot of them said that this is not going to go KU's way, and they need to leave. And I'm sure you can count on one hand in the last number of uh, years the, the number of games where people left early from a game that, that KU was losing. And, and that happened. And so even though I was new to it, I, I had to believe that it was a new experience, or a relatively new experience for a lot of those fans. Greg, uh, what's just the experience been like uh, seeing the night-in or week-in, week-out competition in the Big 12 matching up with, with these new teams? I know you, you come across them in the tournament and in preseason games and things like that, but actually the, the grind of the Big 12 that BYU heard so much about, what are your thoughts having been through uh, nearly a full cycle at this point? Well, I think it was everything... Uh, we and, and players and coaches and, and followers had expected and more, uh, both in terms of the intensity of competition, the, uh, the, the, the sense that you get in every away venue, just how big those schools are uh, to those communities. Um, it, it's, it's exceeded all my expectations. And, and I think BYU as a team's performance has exceeded expectations. They were picked to finish 13th by the coaches in this 14-team league. And, and and if they could pick up one more year in the next three games, they'll be assured of no worse than a 500 record in their first year in this league. And, um, and that would be exceptional to, to be a newcomer and, and find yourself with at least a 500 record and maybe even get a, a game above 500 if things break BYU's way here in the final week and, and a bit. So, you know, I, me personally, I thought a good first year in the Big 12 would be some kind of postseason play. And, and not only is it going to be some kind of postseason play, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be NCAA tournament. They're in everyone's bracket right now. I, I can't see them not making the dance at this rate with three games left in the regular season. So to go from a preseason prediction of 13th, uh, almost no postseason expectation, to being locked by most people right now into the bracket, I mean, who could have wanted anything more uh, for your first year in the best basketball conference in the country? And then the other stuff that goes along with it, the new cities, the new venues, the new fan bases, the vibes you get in these buildings. Considering BYU came from the WCC guys, where the gyms were all really small mm -hmm. and, and the fan support was really minimal, it's, it's a totally opposite end of the spectrum experience and everything I would have hoped for and more. Mark Pope played in the NBA, a heck of a player in college, played at both Washington and also Kentucky. I saw... Who was it? Uh, was it Patino that shot 
when they beat Baylor, Patino gave him a shout out, how proud he was of, of Mark Pope. What kind of person is he? Uh, he seems to be a heck of a, a coach, obviously, understands the game, played the game. But what kind of personality is he? Well, he is gregarious and, and upbeat and affable and funny and charming mm. and ultra competitive and all the things you want in your coach. And then beyond that, he is the fit for BYU. He's a member of, of the school's sponsoring church. Um, he buys into everything that, that the school is about, and certainly he is an adherent to the religion and, and the church that sponsors the school. And so in a lot of ways, he's the perfect coach for BYU. And, and granted, every head coach at BYU has been a member of the church, and so you try and, you try and meet both ends. You try and find someone who um, you know, values his membership in the church as much as he values winning on the floor, and BYU's got that in Mark Pope, and his predecessor, Dave Rose, was more of the same. BYU's been very, very fortunate with their head coaches. Uh, this is my 28th season calling game, and, and I've had five head coaches. Um, one who was a longstanding coach, he was let go early in my first season. The interim coach they got was also a great guy, but, but he didn't uh, continue with the school. And since then, the three coaches I've worked, mo- worked with most are Steve Cleveland, Dave Rose, and, and Mark Pope. And each one has been outstanding in their own way. And, again, it's a unique fit at BYU. You can't just go pick a coach in the country. You've got to find the right coach for a lot of right reasons. And BYU's got another of the right guys in Mark Pope. He's he's young. He's in his 40s. He's seen as a riser in the profession. But I'll tell you, uh, BYU fans would be happy if this was a lifetime destination for him because uh, his early success has shown signs of, of, of staying power and doing it in this league has already proven a lot of doubters wrong, I'm certain. He played for Patino in Kentucky, was on the national championship team. They yep. had a great run in 96, 95, 96. So there's part of that communi- that communication or pipeline, too. Uh, Greg, uh, this is a team that uh, they bomb threes like nobody maybe in the in the league and there's a lot of teams that love shooting threes but they rely on it you live by it you die by it but lately they've been living by it what has what has been the the kind of x factor and then just improving so much from being behind the arc and being able to take again you took you know, take Kansas out of a game you take Baylor out of a game early when you make that many threes yeah, and for BYU, it was kind of late that it happened, at least to KU. Uh, they, they opened 5 for 10, which is great. Then they went through a 1 for 14 stretch, which almost shot them out of the game. That's when KU took a 12-point lead. But then the Cougars heated up when it mattered most, and they end up with what I call a prototypical BYU game. If, if BYU could be 13 for 34 in every game going forward, they would take it. That's where they want that, that. That's the sweet spot. That's the wheelhouse. You make between 12 and 15 threes. You take between 30 and 35. You're in the mid to high 30s in percentage. BYU will take that all night and all season. In fact, BYU is 20 and 2 this year when they just shoot better than 32% from the arc. Now, 32 is not a great number, but because of the volume, that's the number. If they're under 32%, they're 0 and 6. So they're going to shoot a ton, but if you're making in the 20s, it's not going to be enough. But because they shoot so many, just get to the low to mid-30s and you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. Now, that being said, KU is a good match for BYU because they take fewer threes than anybody in the Big 12, and BYU takes more threes than anybody in the Big 12. And KU makes the fewest. BYU makes the most. So I knew going in, guys, it was the kind of game that if BYU had that 13 for 34 type of game and KU kind of was who it was and they had three threes on the night, and then KU helped you out a little bit, of course, with the missed free throws and it got Hunter Dickens' head a bit, and, and there's no McCullough. You have to, you know, you have to acknowledge McCullough is a, a big missing piece. But flip it right around in the game before, they smoked Texas without McCullough. So that's still a good KU team. And at home, with a double-digit lead second half, that's usually been enough to get it done. But on this night, BYU was a bad matchup for KU because of how BYU plays, and and that lends to the outlier nature of Mark Pope's offensive approach, guys. He knew going into the Big 12 that BYU couldn't just out Big 12 the Big 12. Um, they're different than other teams, and they chose to be really different than other teams by, by buying into this hyperbolic three-point approach. And if they're hitting in the mid-30s with that approach, they're going to be in and win a few games. 
One thing, uh, and, and again, we appreciate Greg Rubel, voice of BYU. They were 2-4 and four at one point in the Big 12. A lot of people, if you blink or burp, you're 2-4, you're and four, or you lose two or three in a row. But they've won six of nine, and that doesn't sound like much, but it does in the Big 12 to win six of nine, including the win against KU. They had that disappointing loss to Kansas State over the weekend. Are they playing their best basketball at the right time, or is that not quite where they are? Well, because the defensive numbers have taken such a hit over the two weeks previous to the KU game, you wouldn't say they were playing their best basketball because there have been slippage. In fact, over a two-week span, guys, they went from top 25 in Ken Palm defensive efficiency to around 68th or 70th. So it was a, it was a precipitous slide, and it happened over a handful of just four and five games, but it was real. They flipped it back around and held KU under 70. If you can do that and keep Kansas in the 30% rate, which would be what you did defensively, that's a sign they're getting back to who they were. And again, who they were most of the season was a really good defensive team. The offense got all the attention, but the defense was top 25 until, again, just a couple of weeks ago. But it's a good sign they got it back against KU. So the hope is they've got it back and they can get back to playing some of their best basketball, but those defensive numbers kind of uh, mm-hmm. took them off balance a little bit. We wouldn't say that, but... They're one of those teams that, although, although they haven't won more than two in a row yet in the league, they also haven't lost more than two in a row in the league. And that says something. And they've also had no weeks. They've had no weeks that have included a loss on Tuesday and a loss on Saturday of the same week. And only four teams can say that in this conference. So they've done a lot of things to keep themselves in a good spot in the toughest basketball conference in the country. Thank you, Greg. It's always great to have you on the show. Uh, love the BYU as a part of the Big 12. Thank you so much, Greg Rubel, voice of BYU Athletics with us.